Welcome to the next chapter of circuits. So you have watched or probably already learned from the previous chapter about the basic ideas around current of electricity. What exactly do we mean when we say that there is current and where and who does the work in mobilizing the charges inside the circuit? Hopefully you also have learned important ideas such as EMF, internal resistance, potential difference, resistance. Okay. So as you see behind me, now we are going to level up. So most of the time, the questions that you may have encountered in the previous chapter would look something pretty vanilla like this one. See the first one? Ah, so easy. Okay, so maybe you have a positive terminal here, a negative terminal here. Maybe this is a 12 volt battery. I don't know, potential difference V. The current will flow. Easy. But it's time to level up. Okay, so let's think about all of these other circuits. Of course, you could say, Miss, I remember you teach us to redraw the circuit. Can? Sometimes we can solve it using this way. We can redraw the entire circuit, right? But sometimes redrawing the entire circuit is quite painful, especially if you have situations like this, like what is this? And even scarier, if you have more than one power supply, or you have a variable resistor, or you have more than one power supply, a variable resistor, and a galvanometer, because, you know, why not? Let's join the party. So in this chapter, we're going to look at different, different kinds of circuit. Okay, we have this type, which is familiar, but not so much looking a bit more complicated. And then we have this one. Wow, teacher, what is this arrow? Ah, this is a movable contact, meaning I can actually move this wire around and change the length of my resistance. Okay, and sometimes we have this situ situation where we have a bridge. So these are bridge circuits. Okay, so in this chapter, we are going to look at diff more and more complicated circuits, but it's not that you are learning new things. We are just going to learn to apply our ideas about electricity and EMF and potential difference in different phenomena. But I don't know whether you know this or not, previously all the ideas that you learn is actually part of Kirchhoff's laws. So what is Kirchhoff's laws? We're going to learn that in the next jump. The very first law has to do with conservation of charge. Let's look at a very quick animation here. Okay, when you have a circuit, at any point, let's say this light bulb here, you have the same amount of current going, same amount of current going out. Obviously, ma, because the coulomb come in, it cannot just disappear. It has to go in. It has to come out eventually. You can't just create or destroy charge. So if you have something like a complicated circuit like this, you know this up there, right? The amount of current going in to that part is the same amount as all the little, little exit channels. Same amount now because you have to have the same amount of charge inside the circuit. So here go in so much means here plus here plus here must have the same amount coming out. Okay? Logic, logic. So Kirchhoff came up with this law that basically just describes what he sees. And the law goes like this. It's on that thing we just saw, the sum of currents into a junction. Junction is an important idea here. It's equal to the sum of currents out of a junction. Well, hang on to the second statement first. But what does this mean? Sum of current into junction, sum of current out of junction. Nah, just now we look at this one. You see here, let's say here got... Um, how many amps? I got 3 amps lah. 3 amps, wow, very big. Everything will explode. Never mind, never mind. Just, I create numbers only. Then here, exit will have... Okay lah, let's say they're all equal because the light bulb is the same time. 1M, 1M, 1N. 3M go in, 3M go out in total. So you can use this idea for basically any kind of circuit, even if it's weird, weird one that looks like this. Um, so let's say you have wires coming in. Why is coming out? This is what we call a junction. Any junction in the circuit where where different wires join together. Okay? Like T junction now on the road, you see where the road comes here, suddenly got left, got right, got middle. That's what we call a junction. So if you have a junction, your current coming in the first one is say 10 amps. Woo, very big. Second one is 20 amps. What would be the the Current coming out here, I3. 10 come in, 20 come in. So, how? How many come out? 
So 30 M must come out lor. If not, where all these charges go, they cannot just disappear once they go inside a junction. Okay, so what this means, okay, sum of currents into junction, you can rewrite it as sum of currents in, which is your 10 and your 20, equals to your sum of currents out of junction. So whatever is out, only got 30 out, okay, in and out. This is also linked to the idea of conservation of charge. Conservation means your charge cannot just be created, cannot just disappear like that. So it has to be conserved. Lah. All the charges in the circuit, they cannot just vanish. The second one, algebraic sum of current junction zero is basically the same thing. Uh, but it's talking about now you have current in. Let's say in, let's mean current out is negative equals zero. So all add up together must be zero. Lah. But usually this one is more troublesome because you have to think of positive negative. Or oh, in is positive, out is negative. Can also. But it's more convenient to just think of in equals to all those out. Done. This one you may, re may think like miss, I this is a new thing that I don't know. Hey, you know already. Remember when we have parallel circuits, if they split like that, okay, if the current here is some value. Then here split to become, what shall I say, 1M, very big, wow, 2M. Then what will be the, the current through the battery here? Something split into 1M, 2M, so this one must be 3M. Lor. It's the same thing that you know, just that now there's a name to it and a proper equation that describes what we are seeing. Here, here, on page 35 is a question to get us started with currents. You know, current will split, 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 but how is split? Look at this circuit, oh my! The diagram shows current 1, 2, 3, I, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in different branches of a circuit. So now we call them branches. What? Which equation is correct? So you look at this, you kind of like stun there for a moment. Huh? I, 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 how to know? First thing, you want to remember the keyword junctions. We want to look at junctions, right? Because, you know, Kirchhoff already gave us a clue. He said, I have studied many circuits and sum of currents into a junction is sum of currents out of a junction. Which means, first thing you need to do is you need to choose a junction to look at. Maybe you say, oh look miss, can I choose this junction and this is where the road split. Yeah, the main current is I but there's no big I inside there so maybe we won't choose this one. Okay, let's look and maybe not this last one also. Lah. So, got two junctions to look at. Okay, okay, let's look at this one. So, I choose that as my junction and I see what is coming in, what is coming out. Lah. So, sum of current in equals the sum of current out. So what's coming in? You have I1. Anything else coming in? No more. Okay, long. Then what is going out? I2, I3. That means I1 or split into I2 and I3. Long. Go, go, go. So the name split. And that's literally what this equation says. So from there, you can really go to look at the answer to see which one matches. But, 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 let's look at this other junction down here as well. So if you do the same thing, sum of current in equals sum of current out. What do we have here? Ah, there me. I have appeared again. So in, what is going in? I3 is going in. Plus, what else? I4. I4 is going in. What's going out? I5. So you put I5. iPhone 3, iPhone 4, iPhone 5. Okay. And that is how you can do. So you can just rearrange all of this thing if you want to low. You want I3 equals to I5 minus I4. But I have no need to rearrange that. You see the answer here, all positive, positive one. So here you have two equations already. So you do see which one is correct. Low. Is there I1 equals I2 plus I3 anywhere? Oh yes, there is right there. The others are not quite right. Is there... It's wrong. I3 plus I4 equals I5. I treat no more. These are all wrong. So this is your answer. Just that. Just pick a junction. Check what current is going in, what current is going out, and then you can find. You can actually form an equation.